learn more and more about these perineoplastic syndromes, we are recognizing that the phenotypes are growing over time. There are certain phenotypes which are considered classic for perineoplastic syndromes, examples being uh, encephalitis, uh, limbic encephalitis, encephalomyelitis, or sensory neuropathy, but there are more uh, intermediate phenotypes, which uh, some of them which are now being, uh, we are recognizing more and more. Uh, a good example of that is myeloneuropathy, where patients present with what is like a subacute combined degeneration phenotype, what we usually associate with vitamin B12 or copper deficiency, but they actually have an underlying perineoplastic syndrome. So this uh, article focuses on features which can inform the clinicians to suspect an underlying perineoplastic autoimmunity when they are faced or when they have a patient who has uh, involvement of both the spinal cord and the peripheral nerves. So there are certain features such as um, subacute progression, presence of considerable pain, uh, presence of radiological features with longitudinally extensive uh, tract-specific T2 or flare hyperintensities, presence of gadolinium enhancement, which all should make physicians consider there might be an immune-mediated process which might be driving the disease rather than a metabolic etiology which is commonly considered on the differential for uh, myeloneuropathy or for subacute combined degeneration.